Yo guys, what is up? This is Tom from Unreal Madden. Welcome back to a new Unreal Engine video. Today I'm going to show you how to do a runtime virtual texturing. And this is a blending method. It's way better than the other blending methods because you can enable cast shadows and this will look really nice. So I made this little landscape to start and what you have to do, what is really important and do it at the beginning of your project because the compiling takes some time. Go to the project settings and search for virtual texture and enable this virtual texture support and you are ready to go. So I go into the materials folder that I created and create a new material. Let's call this landscape underscore material and we can create a simple landscape material. I will keep it at two colors, but you can add as many colors or textures you want. And yeah, so we start by pressing tree and left click or I will do this. You can add a texture, but I will make some orange color like this. Okay, it's more yellowish, but that's okay. Then I need to add a set material attributes node. Yeah, it's very important that it's set, not get material attributes. And I add some attributes. The first one will be base color and the second one will be roughness. You can add third or fourth one with normal or specular or something, but I just leave that. Okay, so I connect this to the base color, press one and left click and this will be connected to the roughness with a value of one. Okay, go to landscape layer blend and add this and we need two colors. The first one will be yellow or orange and the second one will be green. Okay, and as I've said, you can do this with any textures. Okay, let's change this to green really quick. and connect it. Now we right click and search for get material attributes. This is the output, it's very important. And again, two attributes, this will be base color and this will be roughness and connect this to this node. We click on use material attributes and we get this node. Then we need a runtime virtual texture output. Now connect this and this and we need an absolute world position. This is this node with a mask node, a component mask and only the blue channel because the RGB channels are like X, Y, Z and we only want the height, so the Z channel. And this goes here and this goes here. Okay, nice. So we have determined the height and the material is basically ready and we can save it. Now we can apply this to our landscape and at first the landscape should be black, but that will be changed later. So we can go to landscape, paint and then add weight blend normal. Okay. And another weight blend layer. Okay, it got applied so I can click on green and paint a little bit. Yeah, this takes some time, but it's okay. You could say green is grass and yellow is something like sand, dirt or something. And what we do now is adding an object to the scene. So we can go to basic and what are we gonna add? Let's add a cube, something very basic and let's increase the scale of it. The material for the cube or for another object is a little bit harder, but I will do this really quick with you. So let's say object underscore material. And let's go into that. We need another very important note, right click and search for virtual texture sample. And let's get that. And we need a linear interpolate node or lerp. Copy and paste this node because we need it in a moment. 
And now you can apply your base color to the A and to the base color and we get an error, but it's okay. We fix that later. Now I will press three and left click for the object. Let's make it pink and plug this in the B. But again, you can do this with a normal base color, normal texture, everything will work the same. Okay, and for the alpha channel, it's very complicated now. So just follow my steps. We need an absolute world position again. Scroll up a little bit, there is it. And again, we need a mask node. This is the same we did already, so go to B. And we need a subtract node. This goes into the A. And the world height goes into the B. So this will determine our height later. And we will build a node tree for the height blending. So you can change the height later. You have to add an add node. Then again, a mask for the height. This goes into B. And we need a scalar parameter. So I just clicked on one and left click convert to a parameter. And let's call the parameter something like height blending. And we need an object bounce node. So just search for bounce. This goes into the mask. And we need a multiply node. So you can press M and left click or multiply. Okay. This works fine. And now we add another multiply node and multiply this by a value of two. And from this multiply node, we go into A. We need another subtract node. This will be connected like this. And now we do the actual blending. So again, press one, left click, convert this to a parameter and let's call this blend. Now we need a divide node, A and B. And the last step is to add a saturate node. This goes like this. Okay, we are ready and now we're gonna fix those errors. If this message pops up, just click on continue. Okay, to fix the errors, right click, then go to materials and textures and at this runtime virtual texture, let's call this height and another, and let's call this landscape. Go back into the material and just apply those. The first one is landscape and this is for the height blending of course, so we need the height. The height needs to be set to world height and save. Okay, some important things before we start. We need to go to visual effects and add some reflection captures. These need to be big or just one. Very, very big. 20,000 by 20,000 by, let's say, 200. Okay, let's make it actually a little bit bigger, 2000, okay, this should work. And also we need runtime virtual texture volumes. And make this very, very big again. Then we apply the height and copy and paste this and apply the landscape. And on the landscape, scroll down till you find virtual texture, add an array element and this will be the landscape as well. So it's actually very easy. Yeah, now we can create a material instance, apply this to our object and you can see if we go into that and increase the blend and the height, you see how this will be blended. I make it a little bit smaller so you can see better. 
you see how that changes and now how the blending changes okay not so big the value of 50 or 40 works actually fine and what you can do now is move the object around and this will be changed in real time guys look how nice this looks oh my god it's way way better and you have those shadows and for this method the video was actually very quick and I hope I could help you look at this okay guys if you like this tutorial please leave a thumbs up if not leave a thumbs down I'll see you next time and bye